Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing! Hello. Happy Saturday. Hi, Malin. How's it going? What are you guys up to? Okay, I just, I had this folded differently and then I didn't like how I folded it and now I have all these wrinkles. Of course, right? It's a, kind of a big piece. I'm just refolding it a little bit. I don't usually fold it this way too. <laughs> so I'm kind of getting myself into a pickle here. All right, let's see here. I have so many uh, fabrics to wrangle today. And I was thinking about block fusing, but I'm a little nervous about like, you know, running out of fabric or running out of interfacing. All right, that's better. That's a little better. This fabric, do you see what it does to my camera? Watch, I'm gonna take it away. And then it turns back to not pink. Why does my camera hate one of my favorite colors? I always notice that with that color. Hi Lynn, hi Hannah, how's it going? So, today's the day, we're cutting out the blazer and it's gonna be fun, hi Aisha. Even if you're not sewing it, I think that this is gonna be kind of a fun sew along because it's going to not be an overwhelming amount of um, sewing. And uh, meaning like it's not gonna be like this, like constant fast paced stuff, which I know a lot of people really like, but this is going to be a little bit more, it's gonna be satisfying. I think that's what, what I'm going, what I'm, what I'm uh, feeling. Hi Debbie, how's it going? Hi, hi. Happy Saturday. So I'm making, personally, I'm making the Auburn Blazer by Cashmerette. You can make whatever blazer or coat you want. My glasses are, are filthy. I can see all kinds of stuff. Uh, and um, I've got, um, all I've done is, like as far as like what I have today, all I've done is fold my fabrics and iron them and wash them. That's it. I don't have anything else arranged. Like my patterns or pieces are kind of in a big jumble still so we can put those together. Hey, Lydia. Lydia, your uh, a laundry basket turned out great. <laughs> it was so fun to see you, you whip that out. Same with Libby, she whipped hers up too. Hi, Sarah, how's it going? So, um, I was, I started kind of poking around on the Cashmerette blog for the Auburn to see, because I'm, I was having trouble discerning between these two interfacings because this one actually looks like knit fabric, but this is the weft and this one's stretchy. 
So I think this is the knit. There was nothing in the kit and nothing on their website, nothing on their blog that tells the difference. And it, if you're a knitter, you would definitely think this is the knit. Like it looks like a knit, you know? So um, I was poking around on there to figure out like which is which. And I did finally find a picture that I'm like, okay, well that's, I can't tell what that is, but that's clearly what they're talking about for this. So, hi, Catherine, welcome. You're cutting out your coat, Melin, woo woo. You're gonna make a toile as well. I can't wait to see mine. <laughs> yeah, totally, Debbie. I mean, th that's the thing is like, there's a ton of great tote bag patterns out there. Like I'm not trying to reinvent the bag. Uh, I think I had to make it very specific to my needs to make it into a laundry basket. And that means that the base is pretty big, you know, it's like a big, Square. You wouldn't normally have a tote bag with this gigantic square at the bottom, you know, it would be more rectangular, something that would kind of fit along the side of your body. And then the hook, right? But it would be really great for if you're always packing a lot of like soft things or big things that are light, you know, like what if you do like kids uh, like daycare and you're, you're always packing lots of light toys together and you could zip it shut and it's kind of big, you know, that would be great too. All right, so let's let's see what I got here. I got my pinking blade out because um, I noticed a tip on cutting the horse hair, which I'm gonna I'm gonna try. My fabric isn't super heavy duty, but it's it's stout enough. It's a canvas, you know. It's not like uh, as lightweight as the laundry basket I just sewed. It's a little bit more stout than that, but it is still really drapey and open weave. So. I'm still thinking of using that horse hair, which is something that just kind of stabilizes the um, chest area here. It kind of gives it a more polished look. And you use a, road, uh, a pinking blade around the curve so that you don't see this hard line of interfacing on the inside of the jacket. I mean, the thing is like this, this blazer isn't super traditional in that there hasn't been fusible interfacing. Fusible interfacings are a pretty rel relatively new invention when you think about it, you know? So, <clears throat> so I got my, my uh, pinking blade out. I'm pretty sure this one's fine, but I found this one, so I just got it. Um, pinking shears would work too. So here's my pattern right here. So I'm, I like to, when I have these big projects, I separate out, my, I separate out all my pieces in the fabrics that they're gonna be cut. Yeah, exactly, Lydia, that's great. And yeah, exactly, and if you drop it or just throw it in a bit, uh, back of your car, <laughs> if you put the zipper in, you don't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna go through all these pieces and kind of separate them out. So sometimes there are pieces that have more than one fabric associated with them. Sometimes when I have patterns like that, what I do is I put those in their own pile, like all the pieces that have more than one fabric. But this is a little bit more complicated. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is um, separate them out by the main fabric that they are, unless it's, of course, it's interfacing that goes in its own pile, right? And like this one's only in horse hair. This is the um, chest shield. So I think that's the only piece like that. So we have, this is fabric, under collar, two fabric and weft, okay fabric and weft. So we have the center front outer, the side back, the side front. And this is interesting, like these two, these all have width the weft interfacing. So I can separate these into two piles. So far these are staying, staying consistent. Upper collar, fabric and knit interfacing. Let's see if we can make it that own, its own pile. Um, I see the pocket here. This is another one of those where it's just, that's the only piece that's cut in that. So we'll just put that with the horse hair. Pocket well, pocket facing. Pocket well, this one gets uh, outer fabric plus weft and this one just gets outer fabric. Lining. And these right here are all, I think, 
just weft interfacing. These are all your hems. We'll put those in their own little pile. So last week we fit this and hopefully we didn't miss any details of updating all the pattern pieces that they go with. Side back lining. Hi Angela, how's it going? Center front lining. Side front lining. Two fabric, front facing, two fabric and knit interfacing. That's this right here, this pile here. To weft outer sleeve fabric only. That's this pile here. I try and keep like my big pieces at the bottom so I don't lose anything. Uh, inner sleeve lining, outer sleeve lining. Oh, and you know what? My sleeve lining is going to be different than my body lining. So I'm going to set those in their own pile. Inner sleeve fabric. Here we go. All right. So that's all of our pieces. These are all outer fabric with a certain style of interfacing. And so are these. Those are all outer fabric. And these are all outer fabric. All this is outer fabric. This is just interfacing. We'll put that with our pocket bag and our horsehair. This is just the lining, which is my floral. And then we have the sleeve lining. All right, I feel a lot better now. I always feel a lot better when I do this with these really big projects because it also kind of gets my mind into feeling more comfortable with that big stack of fabrics over there. All right, so for these, I'm gonna just gently put these into three little bundles here. We're gonna get rid of a lot of this other stuff on our table to get it out of the way. So we're gonna cut the little pile of weirdos, the lining, which is the body, and my sleeve. <laughs> awesome, Sarah, that sounds fun. That sounds hectic. I do not miss those days of going into those. You know, I feel like I look back on so many things I did in my life um, and not realizing how uncomfortable certain things made me, but I would just go and do it anyway. And that is definitely one, like going to those big places with my kid. I would feel so uncomfortable in those places. It was so much stimulation. You know, I also wanted to, um, I just wanted to say that I just want to pay respects to those that were lost in 9-11 as well and all of the rescue workers and those have served. I think, I think all of us know exactly where we were on that day and at that moment. I know, I know exactly where I was because I had just dropped my husband off at the airport and he was on a plane. So just want to definitely acknowledge that day. It's been 20 years. Like my daughter wasn't even alive. Crazy. So ah, I just want to acknowledge that. All right. Let's get to it. I'm going to do my sleeve lining first because these are the only two pieces. I actually hate cutting this kind of fabric too. So then I also wanted to show I have the knit interfacing, this weft interfacing. You can see this one has a texture. Maybe you can see better in my face cam. Whoops, there's my face cam. Whoa, where's my face cam? There, see that? Like a heathery texture. This one is a flat black. It is... Uh, fusible, but it is very stretchy. This one is not, even though it looks like knit, it's not stretchy either direction. Okay, and I told you all about, I was super excited to get this Trico and um, it is not stretchy at all. It's stretchy going across this way. And this is why I posted about it on Instagram. I wasn't trying to slam a uh, Waywack at all. Uh, they don't say it's stretchy in the description, but they say it's Trico. And for me, Trico is knit. It's stretchy. And uh, this is not. And so they just refunded me. They were very kind, just refunded me. And they're like, yep, sorry about that. It's not stretchy. And they didn't want it back. So I have this for days. So I might use these for these little narrow hem pieces. Okay, I got to chip away at using this stuff. 
Nice, Terry. Oh, you, you're making a basket? That's exciting. Okay, so let's put these there. So this, I got this from somebody else's stash, the sleeve lining. It's mystery fabric. Definitely probably polyester. All right, and so these are my lining pieces. You know what I, my secret hope right now, <laughs> my secret hope right now is that I have enough of my floral lining to do that Piper boho tunic in a couple weeks out of it, because it wouldn't it be amazing in that? All right. This is kind of like a blush color, like a, 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 like a blush pink. Blush the right word? I think. I, I really hate this kind of fabric. You, you are never most likely ever going to see me sew things like prom dresses, wedding dresses, slippery fabrics, evening gowns, um, Christmas party dresses, none of that on my channel. I have nothing against it. Do not like sewing it. <clears throat> I would if I had to. If my daughter asked me, I would. If my mom asked me, I would. That's it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Uh, if I if I don't sew that for you, I, it, it just means that you are not in the sphere of sewing love of sacrifice. <laughs> we should probably title that something different, but I think you know what I mean. Hey, Barbara, how's it going? Nice. Okay, so I'm just going to put this. Wait, that said, I swear that said five and a half. Oh, no, <laughs> not at all. You know how like some people, like in the knitting world, they call this knit worthy when you are knit worthy that someone will sew, that someone will spend 40 hours knitting something for you. That's how I feel about slinky stuff. <laughs> and it's not even that I'm that bad at sewing it. I just don't like it. It's just, uh, yeah. All right, let's do this. All right, so I am doing the size 16. We're just jumping right in here. And I'm doing the different fabric for my sleeves because um, I just want it to be really easy to get on and off. You don't have to do that. I think that the blazer fits really well so that even if you didn't do a slinky fabric in there, you're gonna be probably pretty fine. Oh gosh. I am so glad those pieces just came up. It's a pretty new blade, so I'm not surprised, but you know how this fabric is. It gets caught in your table. Okay, so let's notch everything. Why is that notch like, why is it barely on there? It must be this notch right here. Okay, well that's, that's good enough though. We won't skip any notches today. I know sometimes I'm like, eh, I don't need that. <laughs> I, I don't need this pattern piece though. There's no mystery markings on there. There's no seam allowance lines. Like I say this stuff out loud so that I remember, why did I take that pattern piece off? What if I needed something on there? No, I noted there's no hemline on here. No, nothing, right? It is all seam allowance, right? So we're just going to put it in there. It'll be so much nicer in the bin without any pattern pieces we don't need in there cluttering stuff. Hey, Martina. It is Lynn. Right into the cutting, it, you know me. <laughs> I have so much of this fabric too. I was all excited to use some of it. I was like, oh, this is great. I'm gonna chip away at using this person's stash of this stuff. And just the piece I cut this one off is probably five yards long minimum. <laughs> and there's like two other pieces of it. I don't know what it was for but it is a lot. Maybe it should be a uh, mulch mats. <laughs> we had all this uh, brush cleared at our house uh, the last two days. It made, it made a massive difference. Um, just like this little bit of area behind our house that um, was up to the property line that we wanted cleared. They found a rattlesnake and um, they didn't even notice it. They just picked up a log and there was a rattlesnake there. Like, my husband has told me, he's so pleased with the work these guys have done. Which one's mine? 
this is mine. Okay, great. And uh, he kept telling me all the really great things they'd done and everything, but he never even mentioned that. And then like in this casual group message with my daughter, and I'm in too, he was like, oh yeah, they found a rattlesnake. I was like, why didn't you tell me that? I'm like, come on, man. It's only the second one we found on our property since we moved there in the last year, thankfully. All right. So this piece, I, I had to, oops, I just put my paper in the scrap bin. Um, I did have to adjust some of the fitting on based on one of the things I did late in my fitting. Remember, I added, I moved my um, sides. I added a half inch to my side seam. I didn't technically move it forward because I didn't trim any off of the front. It, it'll definitely move it forward a little bit, but it really just added a little bit of girth to the back so that the side seam wasn't so pulled towards the back. All right, where's this notch right here? See, it's already getting slippery. See that? It's already getting misaligned. I'm gonna use my rotary knife there. Where's this notch right here? I have a feeling it's about right here. Okay, it might be right there. Do we do this one? Yep, we got that. Just make sure you get all layers. Okay, same thing, we don't need this pattern piece. All right, there's our sleeve. We're gonna tuck this all nice together. If you want, you could even like do things like this, like pin it together so that it stays a nice tidy little package. You guys know I use a bin um, and I'm kind of tempted to you know, use a separate bin. So the other things you're going to need in here are if you want are the shoulder pads and then there's some buttons and then there is this fusible tape that you can use a piece of fusible fabric as long as it's not stretchy. It's only a half inch wide and you need it for the roll of the um, front collar. Morning, Libby. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Hey, Dallin, how's it going? Which, which small garment are you making, Lydia? <laughs> Did they miss it up there? It is kind of a small garment though. Maybe you're talking about this. Oh, I pulled these binding pieces here because I noticed on the Cashmerette blog that they had this nice little satin binding, you know, kind of, um, you know, when you lift up your jacket, it's right there along the collar seam, it goes down into the hem. And I thought, I'm gonna start looking for my stash. I think that'd be really fun. This would be perfect. This was a bias that was included in my needle sharp box for my blue A dress for a sleeveless version. And look, it's it's not even stretchy. So it would actually work, but it's not long enough, but it would be so perfect. I don't know what I would use this for. It's so weird. It's like cut on the bias and barely stretchy. Super weird stuff. Those are just a reminder that I wanna kind of find something. All right, so we can get rid of this lining on the table. Oh, we're gonna put this in here. We're gonna start stacking stuff up. All right, and then I'm gonna make a pile of the patterns that I don't need anymore. Put them right in here. This thing is gonna be pretty full. All right, let's get going here. All right, so our next little pile here, let's do the weirdos that I, you know, I like to call them the weirdos. Hey, Beverly. Nice. Hi, Kathleen. Welcome. I pulled out some woven fusible interfacing because I was kind of thinking like if I have to interface any of my lining pieces, I don't want to use the black. 
Um, they didn't have like a light option. And honestly, if they did, I probably didn't think about it because, you know, you're usually wearing a blazer in the winter months. So I have the, this fabric here. It's one of my silly little prints I've made. And I was thinking about using it for the pocket lining, but I'm not, I don't, I didn't pre-wash it. So I'm gonna cut this off camera, but oh wait, let's even see if my piece will, oh, my piece won't even fit. Well, never mind. <laughs> I need a pocket lining fabric. I could use the linen. I could put a seam right here because I'm pretty sure that this is a fold line like that. Granted, if that's a full line, I'm surprised the welt lines up. Usually they're staggered. So I might be wrong about that. I should probably look into that before I decide that that's a seam line. This is my design. It's kind of weird. I mean, it's not weird. I just, I took this photograph that my husband did of a bluebird in a, on, um, at one of the boxes. And then I made a little, like a rough sketch of it. You can tell it's kind of like, I kept it very simple because <laughs> I'm terrible at drawing. <laughs> so it's not big enough though. I thought it would be big enough. I need a different fabric for the pocket. Maybe the linen could work. We'll see. All right, so I'll set that aside. I need to figure that out. So here's the horse hair and uh, you need two of these. So I was thinking about the bound buttonhole thing. This is something I definitely want to sew. Oh, thanks you guys. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working, I'm, I'm trying. When your hobby is a little bit stressful. <laughs> I think that's what a lot of people feel about sewing. Sewing isn't my hobby, you guys. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna cut this out first and then I'm gonna do the pinking shears since that's kind of how they tell you to do it. Which line am I? This one here? This one here. No idea which one it is there, so we'll just go right there. Okay, I always tidy up my scraps. That's why you see me do that. And I have an interfacing bin. All right, so now I'm going to use my pinking shear and just this curved edge right here, we're gonna pink it so that when we iron it on to the outer fabric, that you don't see this like hard line of interfacing showing through. It's interesting because this is what, um, Angela Wolf does, that's her name, right? Angela Wolf uh, does the, um, when she has, she has her invisible zipper tutorial, which I've watched a billion times because it's really good. I don't make any secret that I watched it <laughs> at all. Uh, and um, that's what she says to do. She likes to put a piece of fusible interfacing on either side of the zipper opening or like at the zipper opening. And she says pink it so that you don't show, so it doesn't show through. And I was like, oh, that's such a great idea, you know? Yeah, I bet she does. Okay, so this is that stuff that's not stretchy. So I'm gonna cut all my little, <laughs> I'm gonna cut all these little facings out of it. <laughs> because I'm gonna have this forever. If anyone wants some, let me know. <laughs> okay. I've already cut a piece off of it. This is when I, I cut, like it's three inches wide, but I cut a, a long one inch piece off to do my waistband of some underwear. And that's when I discovered, oh, this isn't actually stretchy. I'm using view B, right? Yep, view B. So I'm just gonna cut all these little, oh my God, which one am I? I'm this one right here. I'm the third line in. Third line in, Sarami. Don't forget. I'd really like to get to fusing the pieces today so that next week we're ready to sew. We'll see. That's why I'm moving kind of fast too. 
These I'm going to pin so that I don't get them confused. I'm not, I'm not, you know, crazy. I'm not a glutton for punishment. Well, I kind of am, but you know, it's another story. Don't think we need that notch right there. That's the notch that was puzzling me. Remember that? Uh, it's really rare you actually notch interfacing too. Like, I've never seen a notch in interfacing, but that might be a really helpful guide for doing the back vent. If you're doing the view with the back vent, I'm doing the shorter version. Inner sleeve, cut two. Side front. Oh, this one actually would fit. I could probably get this whole piece here. Yeah, there we go. It'll be nice to get to the fun fabrics, right? The pretty stuff. Oh yeah, what I was gonna say about the bound buttonhole is um, I want to do those, I wanna try them. Like I wanna sew a few. I've sewn them like a long time ago, like it was a requirement for something. But um, I don't, I've never really put them into practice just on that one project, which I don't even know what it was now. But um, I know that they can kind of come undone. I'm wondering if any of you who do them regularly find that they're less secure than a regular buttonhole and what your thoughts are on that. Thank goodness for new rotary knife blades. <laughs> Thank goodness that if you're having a bad day and everything is just like, or you're just annoyed by everything, you know, you could come into your sewing room and just change the blade in your rotary knife and you know you just gave yourself like the most magical gift, right? That's what we do. We're having a weird day. We just go and change the blade in our rotary because we deserve it, right? Uh, I don't know which line to go there. I don't know which line to go there either. That's what I'm doing. Oh, you're probably in the past, Libby. <laughs> I am doing that. Is it's soft, yeah, it's the Trico. So it is definitely soft. And it doesn't stretch. It stretches doing the crossways. But I don't think that'll be a problem at all for the, the hem, you know? All right, so now I'm done with that. And what are our other oddball pieces? We've done those, those. I still need to do this. I'm gonna put that in my bin. Is that all my oddball pieces? Okay. Now we're to the lining, we're getting into the pretty stuff. Time traveler. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of curious, Terry, you know, like I, um, I've heard that. And then just today I was in the Beatrice um, community group. I haven't been in there in a really long time. And so, I was looking at, there's always like a prompt every day, a discussion point. And so one of them recently was about bound buttonholes. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. I'm going to read that. And <clears throat> there are a lot of people who do them often who really like using them. And then there was one person that said that. And I was like, okay, see, I've heard that. It makes sense when you think about it. Well, any buttonhole can come undone if it's not the right length. So is it a length thing? 
This is the lining fabric, Martina, the floral, which looks way prettier in person. On the camera, it looks a little bit flat. Is it even in focus? It is, right? It's just my glasses that aren't. So, and I'm also thinking, Terry, like how often am I really gonna button this closed, you know? These are all my lining pieces. I might have enough, oh, I don't know though, because that thing has sleeves for that Piper Boho tunic. Isn't, wouldn't this be perfect for that? It seems so boho. <laughs> um, I think this is one way. I think this is one way. Otherwise, would, I'd love to put my boob right there. <laughs> it doesn't really fit that well there. <laughs> okay, that is folded up intentionally. It's, is this my line that I'm cutting? I don't remember. No, that's the, that's the line. I put the arrows. A oh, bound buttonhole, Kathleen. Do you have any experience with those? It, I know, right, Terry? That's what I was thinking too. It, it would look nice even if you don't use it, right? It would be a nice touch. Can I really not get this one? Well, maybe I can. Let's get rid of this. If I raise this up here. Okay, that looks roughly straight, not there. Can I push this here? Maybe, maybe if I really make sure. Okay, that said five and a half. These folks uh, pull a thread for you when they cut. That's five and three quarters. That's five and three eighths. Six. Okay, I, what, what's wrong with me here? <laughs> when all else fails. There we go. Look at that. And we can get this a little closer. I can get as close as possible that way. I really want a bigger weight up here, yeah. Yeah, right, Libby? Yeah, and um, I think there's only two. See, I think that if it fits really well and when it's buttoned, it's fairly relaxed, right? and not too relaxed. I think that that helps. That's one contributing factor that will help keep it closed using the proper length. Uh, what you mean, Barbara, you mean that they're suggesting you should be or that's what you are at? According to the pattern, I should be at the pattern's largest side for my waist and smallest for my bust and hips. So meaning uh, if you, you cut that size that fits your waist barely, it would be a little loose up here, right? Uh, the center front piece, lining, lining, lining. This one, this is, a, <clears throat> this is the piece that attaches to that. And that one, you're right, the collar is 
from self. But this little piece right here is, is the little narrow piece that goes along the collar here and sews to this side front. The lapel, yeah. The lapel is still in the bin. We're okay. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> I appreciate that though. <laughs> All right, let's do this. Follow the pink line. And then disappeared. There we go. Follow the pink line. Follow, 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 follow. I'll probably get a copyright strike for doing that. Wow. Okay. Good thing I'm probably not in tune at all. What? All right, I'm just looking it over. Linen is another one that can be a little wishy-washy, you know, like kind of slippery. So I'm just checking it over before I pull it up. Make sure I got everything cut. Why is that? That's probably my table. There can't be a cut. Nick in this, it's brand new. All right. Yeah, no worries, Cynthia. No, I appreciate any of those. Reminders, yeah, they're good for everybody. And I think it is easy to accidentally cut that lapel out of lining <laughs> because you're thinking, oh, this is the inside of the jacket, you know. View B, there's a little circle right here. So I'm gonna use some pins to mark it. I don't know if it needs to be marked on the right side or the wrong side, but we can determine that when we get to the sewing machine. And at least we'll have marked it. I love these short fat pins for marking things like in the fabric. They're, cause they're kind of stubby. They feel like they stay in there a little better. Are you really still attached? No, you're not, okay. Um, we have another little circle right here at the upper back. Did you, Kathleen? Oh, yeah, doesn't it feel great? That's awesome. I, okay, I've been thinking about that. So um, I sent that yesterday to Hearts Fabric. I can't wait to see it on Lexi. She's a lot taller than me and thinner. So I think it'll still fit her because because she's thinner, it'll it'll take up the fabric um, it, with her height instead. And so I can't wait to see it on her. It's gonna look amazing. Um, so I was trying it on and I was thinking about it, thinking like, okay, I don't know if I would actually wear this because I really love it. I do feel a little bit, it feels risque. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it. It just felt really risque to me. And I know it's not. I think the things I would do is maybe do a full bust adjustment or something. Cause maybe what's happening is my bust is filling out that front and making this pull apart a little bit. <laughs> so I'll, I just saw your thing, Barbara. I'll talk about that in a second. But the other thing I was thinking is what if what if you made the bottom still with the pleat in the pocket, but a skirt? Wouldn't that be cute? I think that would be a really cute skirt, like a little like jumper skirt and then um, like a dress. And you're making it a dress. So, but then what happens is you don't have to worry about that bathroom issue, you know? Ye old bathroom issue. There are only three pattern pieces with four seams total where there's a difference to grade two. Hmm. Oh, okay, so what you're saying is, I see this a lot. So what you're saying is, how can I be at the fullest part of the waist when there's not much difference between the bust and the waist anyway? So, um, yeah, so 
when I see that, um, I, really I think what they're doing is going by their own size chart and they're just saying, based on our size chart, this is where it's at and we have built this in relation to our size chart rather than the measurements of the pattern. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, everybody has to do it that way. And I, I think what I just said is probably very subtle and it can be a little confusing. And it's mainly because in some patterns you technically don't even need a waist measurement because your bust and your waist are the exact same. From the waist on smallest size to largest waist, uh, wait. Yeah, I hate it when the waistline's not marked and you're like, well, how am I supposed to fix these things? There are only three pattern pieces and four seams total. Well, there's a difference to grade two, meaning your side seams, one, two, three, four. The amount is less than the pattern's measurement for the largest size. So does it have negative ease? Did you make a, is, is, you are the one making a 12, right? Um, okay, so let's see here. If I, I'm gonna put this like right here, so you can go right here and you are gonna fit there. I, I decree you will fit there. 15 and a quarter. Oh, this is grain line isn't very long. You can see, I don't know if you can see, but the, um, oh, that's a little too close. Womp womp. It is a very fitted waist look. Oh, but there's not much difference between the bust and the waist. Well, that's interesting. Oh, that's the Vogue pattern, right, Barbara? that you're doing? I mean, when I think about Vogue, I think about all their pattern silhouettes, especially the older ones, being that kind of um, hourglass silhouette. And even if the pattern doesn't have the hourglass silhouette, they will put it in the photo. <laughs> Hence why people are like, this doesn't feel like the picture. I'm really cutting that close there. Do I really need to be this precise? No. Do I just get a little stubborn? Yes. That's what you're watching right now, just me being a little stubborn. You have six things you can grade out even if the pattern isn't graded there. Yeah, Barbara, wasn't this the one with all the seams, like tons of seams? Yeah, so you can um, adjust wherever you want. Just because there's no grading there doesn't mean you can't take it in like, um, like on this piece right here. You know, I don't think there's any grading on the center back seam. I just, I just changed it. So that's okay to do. You gotta do what you gotta do. And at least with your practice one, you're going to get a really good idea. Got that dumb song stuck in my head. I think I can get that. Can you see the selvage is like so taut? <laughs> That's the one risk you run if you use your selvage as like a hem or something or as the uh, cut edge for something. The selvage can be really taut and drawn up and it's good to cut the selvage off. And, and in fact, like, ooh, I just shaved a little bit there. Um, I doubt they do this now because, well, because we have such a huge budget fashion industry because we have all the throwaway stuff, fa throwaway fashion and fast fashion and stuff like that. Um, they used to cut two inches in 
from like, and, and probably in couture houses, they still do this. They would cut two inches in, cut the selvage off, just scrap it because then the fabric can truly relax. And you can see it in this linen. It's definitely drawn up. Okay, this is side back. And we got all our notches. No other markings. This pattern piece is just too far away from me right now. Oh my gosh. Oh, I really lucked out. Look at that. <laughs> it's like an inch and a half different. <laughs> Uh, when you sew that, Barbara, what I would do also is try it on inside out, and then that way you can um, fit the waist the way you want. Oy. Make sure you get all your layers in there. Oh my gosh, Kathleen, they are animals when it comes to sending out fabric it's nuts they will stay there all night they and I know that for a fact because I've talked to them several times when they're there like I'll get a, a reply from them at 11 30 at night <laughs> I'm like why are you replying to my email go to bed and she's like oh because I'm still at work shipping packages they can't stand the idea that, um, like, of orders outstanding. Like, it's crazy. I mean, I don't really know what they can't stand or not, but they are animals when it comes to that. And it's funny because when I had chicken boots, I felt the same way. And then my business started growing, and it became kind of crazy-making to operate that way. And so I had to give myself like two days off a week. I didn't ship packages. It didn't mean I wasn't still shipping them. It just meant that I wasn't um, doing it first thing and, and like every single day. It was so much work. I'm going to leave my pattern piece with that one. Okay, so you can make the center front and back large on the sides. And try. Okay, cool. Yeah, definitely try it on inside out. I think with that many seams, Barbara, it's going to be easier to fit. Is it lined? Just remember to not go kind of crazy, crazy on the fitting and being like, if you're like, oh, I just want to take it an eighth inch here. Just remember you're affecting all your lining pieces. So make it a little easier on yourself. Think about what pieces you're affecting. Yeah, and that's my, always my advice to people. Like one of my advice things to people, like you aren't Amazon. People are going to expect you to ship things like your Amazon, but you're not. You're hand making things, and if they're expecting that, that's their problem. You, you know, and and I and I, I had uh, my customers were shocked how fast we sent things, but they were used to people on Etsy not having the item that they ordered and having to make it. And I did not operate that way. It did not go on the shelf for sale unless it was ready to ship, even if it needed a, just a, a hang tag. It wasn't counted as inventory until it had everything. And so if we had stuff that needed hang tags, that was sometimes our first priority so that we can add the inventory, especially if it was something we knew that was kind of low, you know, because you really can get yourself into a pickle. And there's so many Etsy sellers that go out of business because they become overnight sensations, not expecting it for some crazy reason something happens and they go their their store goes crazy and they're like well I've always wanted all these sales so I just made everything available but I didn't know what to make and then they go crazy and they're like oh my gosh I have a thousand orders and it takes me a long time to make these things a thousand of anything takes a long time <laughs> just to ship a thousand packages would take you probably a day and a half by yourself 
especially with the expectation of Etsy, you know, like everyone expects their order to be like wrapped in tissue with butterflies and confetti and a ribbon. It takes so much time to ship your packages when you're on Etsy that that was the best thing that happened to us when we got off of there. I stopped doing that. I was like to my business group, I was like, who wants a huge roll of tissue? <laughs> I'm not ripping, wrapping presents anymore. <laughs> Oh, you know, I feel like I didn't do too good of a job cutting this piece out. These little narrow pieces are always the worst. I'm always like, I'm talking too much about stuff you guys do not care about. <laughs> okay. Let's check our... Look at that. The, the um, linen is so wishy-washy. I'm going to keep that pattern piece with it because if I have to recut it, I don't want to have to look for it. All right, do I have enough of this for that Piper Boho? Oof, no. Maybe a sleeveless version. <laughs> What'd I miss it? What'd I miss? What'd I miss, Lydia? Did I miss it? Oh, okay, Barbara. Well, that's good. That's good. That'll make it a lot easier. I don't think I need any more of this, but we'll set it off to the side here. All right, we're to the main fabric. I don't need these pattern pieces, so let's put them in our, our envelope. I really want to be making more how-to videos, but my focus has been getting this cocoon pattern done. So sorry I haven't had any how-to videos. Oh, do I miss chicken boots? Oh yeah, I really do. I, I really hated to close that. I really hated that. Um, I really miss uh, coming to work and having a coworker, it was a really hard adjustment for me. Um, and I really had to like calm a lot of my inner insecurities and anxieties about having someone in my workspace. It was really hard, but it was so awesome. And she was so awesome. And she had her own little things probably about working in a small space with one person, your boss, you know? but it, it was so great. I don't know why this fabric looks terrible on my camera. So I'm gonna put this here and let's help, see if that helps the camera. It doesn't. What would help this? Maybe the black? See that? <laughs> so ugly. Yeah, it is a little bit lonely and it was such a huge vacuum like so quick like it was already hard that um, like it was it was totally fine like she wanted to be go independent and I think she was just ready she'd been working with me for like six years five or six years and definitely like I'm sure she was probably tired of being a production sewer I don't know it's not like we were best friends and I, I would never want her to have to feel like she had to tell me that kind of thing you know and so that summer before the fire she decided to go freelance or just go off and, and she was just gonna she didn't know what she's gonna do and I was like what do you think about freelance and she was like huh I didn't even think about that that sounds great actually let's talk about it and so she did she went freelance and so that fall we we strategized together pared down the line discontinued product because we'd lost our factory too and um I, it was like a it was more like a joint effort to figure out how to make that work for her and so and me so we pared down a lot of the things that we were like these no one else makes these things so we feel like we have to have them in the line and they are really great they're well designed they're and but the thing is I didn't they didn't like break or anything so people didn't need to replace them so it wasn't something you bought like a needle case every year you know and so 
we discontinued the needle cases and we just said, we're gonna make these kind of an occasional limited edition item. And we were really strategic. And so we, I thought we did like a really good job of making the line manageable for she and I to keep going and sewing. And then the fire happened. Like she bought her sewing machine from me, set up her studio, was really liking it and starting to be like, this is awesome. I'm really liking this. And she would come once a week, pick stuff up, drop stuff off, I'd pay her, it was great. And then the fire happened and she lost her whole studio and so suddenly, I, and I just said, dude, just deal with what you got to do because it was so much more than that. And the, the area was just so heavily impacted by that. I was dealing with it with my family was living with me. My brother was living with me. And then I, I just decided I can't do this alone, do chicken boots alone. And so I had to close it. And so was it ready to be closed? No. <laughs> but at the same time, I was really enjoying the live stream thing and I was feeling a little bit like chicken boots had just grown too big for me. Bigger's not always better. So, all right, so some of these pieces don't take interfacing or they just take like, like what do you guys think about block fusing? This is only three pieces, so I won't, this is the knit interfacing pieces, and these are non, and then these are all the others. I like the idea of block fusing because it seems so satisfying. All right, so here is my center front. Let's just uh, lay this all out here, kind of. these pieces. But, you know, if I can fit those better, maybe I will just put it on here with those and not do the block fusing thing. This is on the bias. This is not. Collar face. This is only cut one. And this is a little bit of this paper off here. These are all the pieces we didn't have to, you know, deal with in fitting. I ironed all my canvas, but I had it folded a different way and I didn't like it. So right before this, the stream started today, I changed how I folded it. <laughs> so that's why it's all wrinkly because the wrinkles went a different way. It really does help to have your under collar on the bias, so don't forget to do that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Terry. I, well, I'm just like, I know I have enough of this fabric, but you know, it's like one of those things, like what if I block fuse all this and then I don't, I don't, didn't need all that? So that's what I was thinking. What if I just did those pieces uh, and, and then these three just do on their own? That seems a little bit more manageable, you know? This piece could go here, but it's only cut one. But I could do this welt maybe here. One, two. Um, I need one of this also of this uh, collar and I need two of this one here. Oh, let's cut off some sizes. That bird's back on my roof right now. <laughs> okay. I'll bet it's a flicker. That's what it is. I'm sure it's a flicker. That's why. Um, what pattern company is it? Some pattern companies aren't going to do those kinds of little techniques. You would need, the pattern needs to kind of be a, like a little bit allowed for it. Let's see how it compares. Usually your under collar is gonna be a little smaller too. This has probably got a seam allowance there. So it is a little bit smaller. Let's make sure. 
Let's cut this, these sizes off this too. Because we like ourselves. We cut those sizes off. There we go. We make it easy on us. All right, so there's my uh, top collar on the fold. Well, let's compare this one to it. Yeah, so you can tell like it's definitely been configured for that. But, but just a normal amount. <clears throat> so it's just like they just did what I would do. They trimmed off an eighth of an inch at the, let's see, let's line this up down there. This is the, no, no, this is the outer edge right here. Yeah, so they trimmed off an eighth of an inch around the perimeter here to nothing here. <clears throat> and uh, this is the seam allowance right here. So you could still cut yours on the bias. This also gets uh, interfacing. This gets the weft. Oh, these all get the weft. Oh, wait, I thought I had the pieces on here that... Oh, interesting. These are all my pieces that take interfacing, just two different kinds. Oh, yeah, I'm not gonna block these. That's just not very many pieces to deal with, really. Okay, that piece is gonna go there. This piece is gonna go here. And these are going to, these are gonna go here, actually. And then this one's gonna go up there. All right, that's my plan, and I'm sticking to it. And then let's, we'll just look at these. Do we have anything a little small? We have that. All right, so we'll pull the pocket facing. Get rid of the pinking blade. That terrible color of them from the camera. The selvage on this canvas is really wide, so I'm just trying to get away from it. It goes up to here. It's like almost an inch in. This is so much easier to do. <laughs> just line up the ruler like this. And we can slide it a little bit over. So much easier. I might do that from now on. Okay, there's my selvage. Yeah, there's only one button on here, Terry. I'm literally cutting off my selvage that would be my reference point for the grain line. So I have to make sure I cut these this way so I don't lose my fold line as my other reference point. So just don't forget about things like that if you need that. We're following the pink line. Okay. Notches. You can go up to like a quarter of an inch in there. <clears throat> we have these circles. Uh, <laughs> this one's mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Which one is my circle? Someone needs to make a like a song, a sewing song. It's not me either. <laughs> Shoot.
I really hate it when I go to this much trouble to mark these little tiny kinds of things. And then I'm like, I didn't need that. You know? Don't waste my time. Don't make me worry. So um, I'm doing view B, so there is a circle right here at the bottom right here. There are two circles up here near the collar. I just marked those. I'm just poking through. I don't know if they need to be on the right or wrong side. For something like that, I think uh, that's a, like probably a clipping point since it's a notched collar. I get a lot of people watching my Rita shirt dress and the Caroline pajama tutorial. In fact, I think a lot of people find me through those because of that kind of collar. They're not hard to sew, but they're a little confusing because I think what you think is the outer edge of the collar is actually the neckline edge. And so it just, it's just one of those things where you're like, this doesn't feel right. And then you do it and you're like, oh, I get it. You know, so it's not hard to sew at all. It's really not hard to sew at all, especially if you're accurate when you cut. It's just one of those things that it does feel like your brain is picturing something else happening, you know. All right, that's at 15. You can really see the green line of my canvas. So that's another reason I'd really like to be a little bit precise. It just looks nicer. You kind of notice sometimes when someone's grain isn't off, is a little bit off. I noticed it on something I sewed this year, last year. I was like, oh wow, I really didn't, that was, it was actually kind of recent. What was that? What was that? Because I almost scrapped the whole video for it. It was so distracting to me and then I had to really be objective and look at the camera and go, is it really that obvious on the camera? It must have been one of those knit tutorials. Huh, I don't know. Okay. Not true. I'm not going to mark the welt yet. I'm going to do that when we go to sew it so that my markings are fresh. All right, so we'll keep this one with the side front with the, sorry, God, the camera looks terrible because it's color. Uh, the side front with the piece because you're going to need these welt pocket markings. So I'll just keep it with it. And don't worry about the welt pockets either. We're, we're going to practice a couple. So if you have some, like when you're done at the end of the day, I'm going to try and remember to maybe cut out a little scrap piece of fabric and maybe a second set of welt pieces. Just do that, you know, like just, just give yourself that so that you're not worried. Oh, right, Beverly. Oh wait, um, this is, I'm going by that line, I guess. Yeah, those, um, I think that that's when you need a, um, I was just looking at that, like a full calf adjustment. You know, like, uh, um, I, cause I was looking at the profile of, of what happens when you need a full calf adjustment and that sometimes, yeah, some, whatever's along the front will pull Oh yeah, Elizabeth. Yeah, the, that's so famous. Knits torquing like that. <laughs> I know what you mean. You know, I did that once and then when I recreated it, I was so careful and it did not feel the same. <laughs> it just made me go, okay, I guess my body really likes the torqued fabric. <laughs> it was very disappointing. <laughs> and you know, also when you've been washing something and wearing it and it definitely gets a little bit distorted, you know? Your body kind of breaks it in. All 
Is any of you doing like a wool melton or something a little trickier to deal with? I didn't really talk about that since I'm not using that fabric. Oh man, my nose is itchy. Wait, I'm going by red, I think. Eek. Bust Apex, we don't need to mark that. Here's that same dot. Cause this is the, um, the other one was the lapel. There's my roll line, which we're gonna need today. So don't separate this piece cause we're gonna put a little piece of uh, interfacing there. And I'll mark those dots after I do that. Cause otherwise they're just, the marks will just be in the way. Oh yeah, Malin, right? You have to use like a steam, right? A, t a steam technique. Okay, let's get our, let's cut off the sizes we don't want. Looks pretty good. I'm trying to remember not to go too far past my pattern piece with my rotary knife so that I leave as much fabric as possible. Which one's mine? This one here. Notch your center back neck. Oh yeah, you know what? I need to pull those pieces back out of the bin because they still need interfacing. Oh my gosh, what? Why? <laughs> I think all three of these, all four of these, need interfacing still. Don't forget. that little piece. Right, I have a little, here it is. The welt. <clears throat> okay, so I want to remind you that with the little welt pocket, you definitely want to match the grain line or say you're doing like a plaid or stripe, some kind of texture. You definitely want to match the texture of the way you cut it out on the front so that when you put your welt pocket on, it doesn't look completely different. You know, that they, these stripes are going like this when the rest of your garment is going like this. So take note of that. If you're trying to match a plaid, maybe you cut this out when you're about to sew your welt so that you can kind of make sure you can even uh, take a photocopy of your front when it has the cutout piece of fabric, if it's got like a plaid on it, right? Um, <clears throat> take that front welt, maybe even sew your center front to your side front, then, you know, photocopy it with the welt box drawn on there and then try and match your welt to it. That way you can get kind of a perfect match if you're trying to get those stripes lined up. I, I try and make those kinds of things as easy as possible for myself. I know that's going a little overboard, but sometimes I just don't want to think about it. And if I'm really close on fabric, because when you start matching plaids, you really start eating into your fabric, you know, so. I'm gonna look at my green here.
You need two of these. I'm cutting them individually since this is a single layer of fabric. And make sure you flip if you're doing one layer like me. If you're trying to match your plaids, definitely cut them out singly. I'm sure you know that. Oh yeah, Beverly, that's awesome. Really, Beverly, that's so cool. I love it. <laughs> Nothing like that, right? Nothing like that kind of endorsement. <laughs> All right, so this was the one I cut right here. So this one is, we're gonna put pins on the inside. Oops, yep. I, I, I can't really tell a right and wrong with my canvas, so I'm just going to mark one side and then if it becomes more apparent later. At least I've been consistent. That's my plan right now. Um, and when I go to iron the interfacing, I'll definitely check it out. I'm very uh, tempted to make that canvas jacket by Wardrobe by Me. I don't. There's something about the idea of that canvas jacket that's really appealing. No. Well, I just ruined that blade. bet. Let's see. Maybe not. That would be shocking. It's hard to tell with canvases because there's so many little threads. It's, it feels like you're cutting through all of it. Oh my gosh. I literally just cut that pin. <laughs> Maybe I hit the plastic. Could I really have gotten that lucky? You know? All right, so here, I'm gonna take these pins out now. Let's not make that. Oh yeah, that hat pattern is great. I saw that too. Fusible doesn't stick, hmm. I don't know, why couldn't you use the sew-in? Because I was thinking about that, like, like I said earlier, like, Fusible hasn't been around forever, right? All right, so let's put, we need two of this collar here, two of these pocket facings. This pocket facing is what you're gonna see when um, you put your hand in your pocket and um, this is the little bit of fabric peeking through the hole of your pocket opening. If you're using self fabric, you could actually skip it. <laughs> For self pocket for self fabric for your pocket lining. I doubt you are. It's kind of bulky to do that in some cases, but you never know. Maybe your fabric's not very bulky. All right. I'm gonna turn this towards me like this. Oh. I have nails on that side of the table for cords, so. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> what am I doing? I know that fit. <laughs> it's a well, raglan camp shirt? Really? Helen from Helen's Closet's kind of killing me with all of her, um, pattern hacks lately. Like I just want to do all of them, you know? That Gilbert into a dress is like the Rita shirt dress, right? Looks so cute. And I've been organizing my patterns lately. <laughs> you guys know that. And um, I can't believe how many I have. It really didn't feel like a monumental task to organize them. And by organize them, what I mean is that I am taking a photocopy of every pattern card, just the, just the picture and the fabric requirements. And man, I can't stand it when pat pattern companies have all that information on five pages. <sighs> um, 
And uh, I can't believe how many patterns I have and how, what a monumental task this has become. Like it's taking me, I'm chipping away at it for weeks. I started this months ago, you know? Oh, that's cool, Libby. All right, I need two. Oh, I only need one of these. Well, how do you do? One for the outer collar, of course. We only need one of these. We just cut the under collar. Okay. Yes, right, Elizabeth? I, I feel like that is the one feedback. I have, a, I have some feedback for sure with uh, pattern companies. Like, um, like Helen, she does that. She has her stuff. And I appreciate it's because there's so many um, the, uh, sizes. But I would like, I think you can put it all on one page. I just want the size chart. I don't want the finished measurements. I don't care about that until I'm, I'm looking at um, something else, right? What I really want is I want the size chart, the yardage amount, and the flat sketches on one page and like fabric requirements as far as like what kind of fabric it takes. And then on the other page, maybe the cover it, or the cover with the flat drawings and then the other information. That's what I want. I want it two pages max. There's no reason it needs to be on five pages. And so, yeah, like some of my, my things, I would, I'm gonna have to go to the pattern to consult or Google it when I'm at that point, you know? But I'll, sh I'll show you guys my binder. I should show it to you because I just finished filling it last night. So this is a copy of every one of my pattern cards. I took a screenshot of all of my digital patterns <laughs> and then I have them, this is how I have them. I have a, a folder that's, that I haven't made yet. I put AAA so that it stays at the top. I always put three A's at the uh, folder if I want the folder to be the first one on the list, right? And then I have all of these are my PDFs patterns. And then I have a short list of ones I haven't made yet. So all the others are ones I've made. And then I have physical patterns, you know, like the cashmere, that, you know, an envelope. And so they're not organized yet, but they are organized by category. There's so many patterns in here. It's nuts. I, I can't keep going like that. <laughs> one, two, third one. In one, two, third point. See these little circles, these are gonna match up to your um, outer. We'll just keep it with it. Yeah, so I'm gonna do a probably a short video on how I'm organizing it. Um, not because I think my way is the best way, but just to give some ideas, especially if you're getting into that territory that I'm getting into where I have so many. I'm also going to make the hard choice of getting rid of some patterns. I'm at least going to get rid of them printed out if I don't think I'm going to make them again, you know? Me? Terry. <laughs> I can tell you my schedule if you want. <laughs> I am a little worried about time right now because I signed up for that Photoshop class and I'm getting a treadmill soon that I'm, I've been like thinking about for months. And I wanna fit all of it in. <laughs> okay, so this is uh, my pocket facing. This is, you know, gonna show, like I said, it's gonna peek through your pocket. So yeah, the grain line is important, but it's not gonna be as critical. I definitely have time, Terry. I don't have a kid at home anymore. That's huge. My husband cooks dinner. <laughs> How can I make you jealous? <laughs> um, I play video games at night. 
If anything, I should be using my time better. I don't work on the weekends, but barely, but the, really the thing I wish I didn't have to um, compromise on is comments. And I, because I, I get a lot, but I don't get as many as most folks, you know? I try not to work on weekends. I've definitely taught myself not to do that. But like this binder, I did all the three hole punches last night because I was like, you got to work on this in your free time because this is thing, this thing is never going to get done. So I've just been chipping away at it. Like, okay, I have a hour before i am got to go home. I really should be working on the cocoon pattern, but, but one hour I'm going to start and I'm not going to want to stop and go home. So that's when I start photocopying more of these blasted pattern covers or also obvious, actually the printing out the PDF ones was the easiest because what I did, <laughs> I'll probably, maybe I should put this in the video too. I, this one doesn't need interfacing, but this one does. Um, I would, and these do too, wait, interfacing and interfacing. I would print out the front of every, like, like 10 of them. And then what I did was I put them back through the copy, the printer, and then I went and did the backs. That way I didn't have to go to the thing, flip it over, put it in for every single one. That's one of my tips. <laughs> yeah, right, Beverly? That's so true. That's so true. <laughs> I've I've looked at that too. I really like it when they state it really clearly. And also like I want the seam allowance on every page. <laughs> and I want it on the pattern pieces. I not everybody reads the instruction book. I don't. I don't look at the cutting layout ever. You know? Alright, so these are my last few pieces, except for interfacing. This is it. There's just a few non fiddly pieces here. The sleeve, the sleeve, the undersleeve, and side back. Oh, I know. Sleeve is always such a pain in the book. It always makes it so that you have one piece above the last row. I don't think I can get it all in here. Let's see. Let's fold this a little better. Okay, let's get that. That gives me more. You know, one side of this looks a little bit shinier. This is a linen cotton canvas. Oh, there's a red thread. There's a red thread woven in there. <laughs> and then we can get this fabric off the camera. All right, let's try that there. Uh, definitely doesn't have a one way, right? So we could do this. That still won't allow me to get one piece, one piece. I hate that. So let's get the biggest piece we can. We don't need this vent. I'm not cutting that vent, so uh, maybe I can get this here. I hate that. I swear every time there's one little piece that won't fit. I have plenty of fabric, by the way. It's just, you know, <laughs> that weird little oddball. Just kind of smoothing out the canvas under there a little bit. When do I sleep? I'm here, you know, like 40 hours a week. <laughs> Let's 
All right, there's that one. Okay, yeah, we'll get that there. I wonder what color I could have put on the camera. Oh shoot, I'm into that selvage. Oh, okay, I am like barely on one and it's in my seam allowance, so I'll allow that. Um, I wonder what color would have corrected the camera. Like what, what could I have put in here to correct the weird pink hue I get from, oh, did I already cut this? Oh, I did, oh my gosh, I don't even remember doing that. That's scary. This is, this is my notch. Notches here, here. Libby, I forgot to say how amazing your map of laundry basket was. I said it at the beginning because Lydia made one too. Is there a notch there? No. There's a notch here. And then there is a circle right here. Um, I'm not sure if that's for B or A. So we'll just mark it. I bet it's for A. So if you're doing the vent on the, on the sleeve, you might want that. Um, One of the funny things about doing those pattern cards was the um, figuring out the categories. Like for the most part, they were all pretty easy, you know, like tops, bottoms. Um, I put all jumpsuits with dresses. So I just made like one piece garments, you know, cause that's like, you know, it's a whole outfit. <laughs> and then um, this has no interfacing. But then I got to the, I have a dog coat pattern and I have um, two stuffed animals and I decided to put those in their own category called animals. <laughs> Even though I know one's a live animal, one's not. <laughs> I didn't know what to do with those because there's only three. I have two stuffed animals and patterns and one dog coat. I actually have two dog coats because I have mine, but uh, I had put the closet free closet core one in there. I never made that one and I was kind of perplexed like I have a children's section but do I put the stuffed animals in the children's selection and aprons I have three apron patterns I don't even wear an apron um, I have three apron patterns and so I was like well this would be great in like a home section I have no other patterns for the home oh the closet core floor poof Where'd that one go? I printed that out. That's weird. I didn't see it in my, cause that could go in home items. So there's probably still a few things I gotta like copy. All right. Can I set, I can set the uh, white balance. I tried that a little bit. It's not really called white point. I know what you're talking about and I don't know much about that, but it does have it. So if I uncheck it, that helps. It's st starting to cr creep back in, huh? Let's do that. Oh, doesn't that look so much better? Look at that, it's such a huge difference. Um, I put it in stories, Libby, because she emailed it to me. It's still there, though. Check it out, because she used uh, this big tropical print. That's the fun thing about that pattern, is that if you have that, like, one fabric in your stash, that you're like, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. It's this big print. It's so great for that. <laughs> Th 
that made a big difference. <laughs> I should have done that. Thank you, Cynthia. <laughs> I should have done that sooner. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You know why I didn't do it originally was because I was afraid that once I put other fabrics on the camera, it would go back. So I should have just done it. Doesn't that look so much better? <laughs> it's unforgivable. It's weird. It's always with turquoise that it does this. Do you have a stuff category? So what's in your stuff category, Malin? <laughs> I like that. What's, what do you have in there? I'm curious. The other good thing I did was I don't have a whole lot of quilt stuff. Yeah, isn't it, Livy? It's perfect. Um, I, I uh, just decided to put all, just put my quilt patterns in the binder. So in other words, like, I had to buy a binder too. I didn't have a big one. See, so here's all my quilt patterns. These are actually the patterns. Man, being a quilter is so easy <laughs> as far as holding the patterns down, you know? This was like in a little clear sleeve, but then you get this. So I just made sure I didn't like punch through any of the measurements and I just put the pattern in here, you know? That reminds me, I actually have some quilt patterns I haven't I haven't printed out because I only went through all the patterns in my sewing like garment thing I didn't do the one in my quilting shoot there's not very many there but still that reminds me because I have the um a few patterns by Miss Make like she has this the clava quilt and I really want to make one for my sister because it's celestial she really likes like celestial stuff that's what just reminded me. I was like, oh yeah. Okay, wait. That's on there, right? Now I can just adjust this right here. There we go. Terry just made me feel so good that about my, <laughs> my amount of work I got, I get done. Cause I feel like I don't get enough done all the time. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, when am I going to exercise? That might cut into my video game time. <laughs> I'm becoming a lot more like my mom though. I'm going to bed later and later. My mom stays up late. I don't know how she does it. All right. Okay, so I just have that one, I think, side back piece in fabric and the inner facings. What time is it? Dang, it's a, kind of a big project, eh? All right, this one doesn't need any other notching or anything, so we're just gonna take that pattern piece off. This is our center back. No interfacing. Bags and apron. Oh, see, I have a bag section. I have so many bag patterns. I had to do that. A apron, poof, sewing machine cover. Yeah, see, that's good. See, and see, I also had like an accessories category, but I put things like slippers and hats in there, like clothing accessories. Cause I had all of those together with the accessories and it just felt like I might not remember. Oh, and that's the other thing. Like I have so many underwear patterns <laughs> because when I told, when I asked hearts, I was like, Hey, do you guys, would you guys ever want some underwear sewing? They were like, you know, we just don't, no one ever really caught on here. So we just, um, discounted all the stuff. And that's when they gave me that, like, fold over elastic to try and she was like here you can have these patterns too and she she gave me um, a bunch of patterns I when I make mine I use a pattern that I I just copied from a pair so I have so many underwear patterns that I've never even used and um, I was 
like, okay, I have so many of these. What do I do? And so I decided to make like a loungewear category. So the Luna loungewear in there, the Carolyn pajamas. I'd have the Lakeside pajamas, but I've lost that file because that came via Sprout Patterns. And then um, uh, something else in there. What else is in there? And then tons of tons of underwear. Something else is in there. I don't have the, the ABB leggings in there. They could be, I just have those in bottoms because I think that's where I would look. I had to think about like, where would I think to look the first, first place I would look, you know? So this is my line, right? Yep, this is it. This is all we did to the side back was add that little half inch there. Mostly I altered my center back for fit because that's where I needed it. There we go. My, my fabric bin's getting full again. <laughs> I don't think I need these notches, but we're notching everything. I don't need interfacing. All right. All right, so let's make sure I don't have anything in the bin that needs interfacing. Uh, yeah, ro I put the two robes, per yes, exactly. I put the Howry, the Suki, and the Asaka. I have three. <laughs> All three, not probably, well, I don't know about the Asaka. But all three definitely, uh, or the other two aren't even being made anymore. I just keep them just in case someone asks me a question. Slippers, hats, and such. See, yeah, categories are hard. Oh, okay, so that's interesting. So are you doing that digitally, Malin, and you can tag it? That's so smart. That's a little beyond me. <laughs> Okay, these sleeves. Side back, center back, under sleeve. Pocket facing, all right, all these, no interfacing. None of these. I still need pocket lining and then there's my interfacing. All right, so we're good. I don't really need this piece or these. And I think, yeah, my next big project is going to be going through and throwing away a lot of PDFs that I'm, I just don't think I'm ever gonna use again. I even put um, eight patterns in a naughty category, meaning like I don't ever want to sew those patterns again. I don't want to look at them. They stress me out because those designers weren't nice to me. And um, I don't want to get rid of them though because I feel like I'll jinx myself. <laughs> so I just put them all together in a naughty file. <laughs> you know, you just got to sometimes do that to yourself to not look at something that causes you kind of anxiety, you know? You don't need that. All right, so this fabric here, these are all my leftover fabrics. All right, so weft and knit. So this one's the weft and this one's the knit. <laughs> Make it very clear. Weren't there three that took the knit? One, two, right? You used to use Trello, but you switched to, to oh, so Notion is a um, program. Oh, tell us about Notion because I haven't heard that. So this is really interesting. This pattern inventory, I just want to note this. If you're doing the Auburn, 
Uh, in this interfacing category, they don't put all of the uh, body pieces that you need to interface, so don't miss that if you need to do that. I was kind of surprised, unless it's here and I'm not understanding how it's written, but I don't see it. All you see in this interfacing category are all the hems and the chest shield, and that's it. And then, you know, in this page 16, there is all this interfacing um, breakdown right here. So just so you know. Um, all right, yeah, it is only two pieces, upper collar and two fronts, okay? And then the weft, one, two, three, four, four. One, two, three, four. That's interesting. The pocket welts are here, but it only says view A, two pocket welts. Oh, so view B doesn't have pockets? Oh. Does that mean my jacket's not long enough for pockets? My pockets probably, or my garments probably not long enough for pockets, you guys. Wah. I have to have pockets. I have to think about that. I'll still sew them, don't worry. I'll still go through it. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah, because you don't want that pocket bag hanging below the hem. Well, it wouldn't because it'd be stuck in the lining, but then it'd be like kind of, you know, pooling there. Shoot. All right, so this is stretchy going both ways. Mm, it's a little stretchy this way and a lot stretchy this way, but that looks like the cut edge. So this is the stretchy way. This is the selvage. Well, uh, yeah, Lydia, like I just noticed that, look. I'm making this shorter one, no pockets. <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> that bird is back. <laughs> Notion.so. Okay, cool. Thanks for giving us that link, Malin. That I exactly, Beverly. But I wanted to do a well pocket. <laughs> Maybe what I could I'll definitely put like a interior pocket on my lining then. You know? I need somewhere for my glasses. My car keys, my wallet. I don't want to use a purse. <laughs> it's so bad, I know. Okay, so this one will go across. I could make maybe shallow pockets, yeah. That's what I'm thinking too. That's so funny that I'm just now noticing that, you know? Okay. Wait, that's the cut edge. Wait a minute, I'm so confused. Look, do you see this jagged line? That looks like a cut edge. And look, there's one over here too. Oh, what the heck? Where's the... Uh... Okay, well, this is... What's the, uh, okay, maybe this is the grain line. What the heck, I can't tell. I really can't tell. This way, the chevrons are running the length of it. Um, so if I stretch, let's say, this is how I sometimes check. <laughs> We'll stretch this uh, eight inch section here, right? 
And then if I stretch an eight inch section going this way, it's less, less stretch. Wait, one. So which way does the stretch go on this? I'm thinking that the stretch would go around the body and that this would be the selvage then. Okay, it's being interfaced to a woven fabric. I'm not gonna worry about it. Ooh, I like that idea, Libby. Yeah, this is interfacing, Elizabeth. So there's two styles. I literally keep flipping this over and then forgetting I want it this way. Uh, so there's a stretch one and a non-stretch one. They call the non-stretch one the weft interfacing. And then this one's the knit interfacing. You only need it on two pieces. But like I'm trying to measure to a grain line and I just can't find one really. Told you I'm not a professional coat maker, right? <laughs> hey, Corey, how's it going? You use Notion as well? That's awesome. Hi, Marjeet, how's it going? Oh, cool. Thanks for sharing that, Malin. Everyone's loving that. You just got your pattern hook in the mail. Yay! <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I still have a few. I'll probably add more pattern hooks because I don't really need all the pattern hooks I have. So if you guys need one for your laundry basket, they're free on my website plus the shipping. That's all you gotta pay. And I've been I've been um, refunding people's shipping if it went over, too. Okay, I'm not gonna do the notches for this. It sounds like it's free, Barbara. Okay, we'll just set this on here. Put this in the to be ironed pub. And then I, I was listening to the Love to Sew podcast on organizing fabric. And I was really surprised they didn't mention Trello. So have they gotten away from that? Like, are they really liking Notion more now? <clears throat> I'm not caught up on all the episodes, that's for sure. I wish my canvas was a little more ironed. It's so much nicer to use the fabric as your uh, pattern piece sometimes because it sticks to it. But I know like sometimes you want to make sure you're actually cutting it precise. To be ironed pile. You can go in there. All right, and then here's the area. A few more pieces. Almost there. App and desktop. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so this stuff, uh, look at this side versus this side. This is the fusing. It's very soft and fuzzy. <laughs> there we go, it's like clingy. <laughs> yeah, Barbara. I don't know if it was one of you guys that sh that was stash shaming me on my uh, fabric post. <laughs> I doubt I doubt you're, that person's here. <laughs> but I was kind of like, what the heck? Um, but then I was like, they obviously didn't listen to that episode if they wanted to uh, make it sound like I have a huge uh, stash <laughs> because. Their, both of their stashes eclipse mine by quite a bit, so. 
but you know, one owns a fabric store, one owns a pattern company. If I didn't have as much fabric as I did, I'd be panicky because I would run out for streams. And I, I tried to answer that person. I was going to answer that person so many different ways because at first I was like, wait, why does she think I have a lot? I only have 22 pieces that can be made into garments. I wasn't going to count them, but I did after Helen and, um, oh my God, Helen and, um, <clears throat> Oh my gosh, I just blanked on uh, her name that owns Blackbird. What the heck? What? Heck? Well, anyway, they, they, they were very honest and said what their stashes were. And I was like, oh, okay. Caroline, thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> that was like the most foreign name ever for me for a second there. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> Yeah, and then uh, when I, I heard, like, you know, how they store it, I love how real they are and transparent, you know? Okay, so it's just those two and these two? Why does this feel, like, so much more epic than it really is? Yeah, I was like, I was like, well, wait a minute. Like, I've used, like, probably... 25 pieces of fabric in the last three months alone that I have to have a lot of fabric and I don't in fact I do have a few that I'm like oh, you know I'm not going to get to that now till spring and that kind of bums me out but um I'm not too worried about the screen line and then I just decided I'm not going to reply <laughs> I was just like, uh, I hope you're not fabric shaming me. I didn't say that last part, but I was thinking it. <laughs> Good job, Barbara. <laughs> I know, I feel like doing that kind of um, stuff, you know, when you're doing fitting, it's more than just doing the math. It's the anxiety of making a mistake, of your garment not fitting well. There's a lot of things wrapped up in that. So it's, it is really good to take a break. And that's when I start going, well, what would I do if I didn't get this quite right. What's my backup plan? You know what I mean? And then that's kind of how I can go forward sometimes. So yeah, take a break from the pattern anxiety for sure. I would really like to iron this. Is this interfacing? <laughs> it's a little bit wrinkly, <laughs> but I can't do that. All right, two more pieces, and then I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to iron on some of this stuff. I'm going to iron on the center front only because I'm going to show the little piece you do for the roll line of the collar. That way you're ready on Saturday if you're doing this. So cause you, you know how to iron on your interfacing. Um, if you're using wool though, make sure you look up some like tips and tricks on ironing and preparing your wool because you can kind of, you know, pre-wash it in a way that will um, set it up a little bit better for, you know, wear being worn and stuff. If you plan on washing it, you know, you need to make sure you do it properly. If you're not used to dealing with hand wash only things or dry clean only things, I can tell you as a knitter, it's really not hard. You don't have to dry clean everything. Some things you may have to, I, I don't really know. Like you might, it might change the way the fabric looks. Um, I've just kind of sucked it up and just sometimes thrown it in the washing machine, no matter what happens, because I know that's how I want to take care of it. And some fabrics really do lose a little bit of their charm when you do that. Most of the ones I pick now that they're just going to be fine. There's going to be more wrinkled or maybe a duller or lose a little bit of their vibrancy over time, you know, 
but for the most part, I just throw everything in the washer and dryer. After dealing with a lot of hand knits and stuff, I can say that you can get like um, really easy to use uh, soaps. Like by, I always bought soak um, and eucalyn, eucalyn specifically for wools. I really liked them and I just do it in my bathroom sink. Like I just fill it up with a little bit. Bye Kathleen, see you later. Have a good one, have a good weekend. Um, I would just fill up my sink up with the water, put my item in there, let it sit, agitate a little bit, kind of work on the sleeves where it got the dirtiest or my belly area, those, you know, like front of you, like boobs, belly and sleeve hems. And then I would, I always had two towels. I had one that I would roll it up into immediately after kind of squeezing out the water. And then I would step, I roll up in the towel and then I would step on it and get as much of the moisture out. And then I'd put it on a fresh clean towel, lay it out flat to dry. And I would put it near a heating vent too, to make it go faster. Cause our vents were on the floor. You can put it in the sun. That's fine for most fabrics. It's totally fine for just drying. And it really doesn't take long. And it's, and it's actually not bad. I would sometimes even just do it while I was getting ready for work. <laughs> I just like to set myself up with, I always have the, the hand washing soap. I have it under the counter of my bathroom sink. You might want to wash your sink first too. Like you don't want toothpaste on your garment, you know, but that's how I do things like that. And I know a blazer is probably a big, bigger thing than that, but you can totally do that. You can do it in a hand washing tub or your kitchen sink or whatever. That's a great tip, Libby. Yeah, I think starting with just like a couple of points and then working your way out is good with something that's kind of a big project like that. I'm gonna keep this on the bias only because I'm not gonna to wanna to worry about it. I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference with the interfacing part, but we will stay true. Again, I don't do any of the markings. Don't do that on your interfacing. It doesn't matter because you're gonna iron it anyway. You just need it on the main piece. Might be able to get some of these. No. I will still iron my welt so that we can sew one or two to practice. Oops. fabric is so wrinkly this it reminds me of like a really cheap uh fabric associated with like um your car <laughs> like headliner or something <laughs> oh stop that all right that's it All right, so I'm gonna go to my iron. I'm not, th don't think it's set up, up right, right now. now. Not really. So let's just zoom it in. And we'll, we'll do that same <laughs> camera thing too with the color. Oh, I took that off. This is what I'm gonna do. Well, it works over there. Fine. Um, let's sharpen it a little bit. That's good, you have lots of muslin too. It makes, I think, me feel, I feel more confident with my fitting when I know I have lots of fabric to experiment with. Makes me feel less, you know, um, like I need to be more less conservative. Okay, 
I don't need to be as conservative. I can do what I want. Let's put my chat on so I can see you guys. Oops, wrong one. There we go. Let's see if I can change, straighten this a little bit. Oh, I can't see the, <laughs> I'm looking at my phone. All right, let's do some of these easy pieces first. So let's think about the right and wrong side of our fabric right now. I think I'm just gonna stay consistent. That's, I think the best thing I can do. Oh, cool, Libby. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's that's even nice too. I love when I don't have the pressure, you know? <laughs> Libby, which pattern are you doing? I'll just do a few little pieces and then I'm going to do the center front with the roll line. Okay. I, I like to do mine, like I don't like to iron from the side of the interfacing. Uh, it's just really a texture thing. It kind of puts my teeth on edge. I know that's that's kind of weird, but it's just uh, I like to iron from the side of the fabric and I know that for some folks this is a little bit risky getting the interfacing in contact with your iron. I don't really have a problem with it, but um, some interfacings definitely are they just reach up and grab your iron, you know, like that little edge. Oops. Let's see if I can get this straightened out. The little edge like frizzles, you know, almost like it melts. So you have to watch those. Then I would probably uh, be more, a little more careful and I would just do a little bit, you know, from this side, get it going, get it all around. And then I would finish it. There's a wrinkle in this. I wonder if that's gonna be a problem. I don't think it is, but there is a little bit of a wrinkle. The blue of my eye, does it? That's really funny. That's what's changing it this time? Oh, you're right. Oh, that's so interesting. You know, I always heard those little tips when I was photographing product for the website to put something in the frame that would help the color balance. I never noticed anything. <laughs> I tried all kinds of things. Oh, cool, Libby. All right. Got our under collar. So let's see here, let's find our front. So the other thing you need to do is you're gonna need to do all of the little hem interfacings. Don't forget about those. I'm digging mine out right now. So we have this horse hair and all these little doohickeys. And I'm gonna get the instructions because the one thing I'm a little bit fuzzy on is the order in which you interface. Because there's four interfacings on the front, right? 
Let's see here. Oh no, it's right here. Okay, so. So it says apply the interfacing, apply the chest shield, chest shield, and then apply the hem. But when, where do you, when do you put the little um, roll thingy on? Oh, here it is. Found buttonholes are going to be Wait, roll line. Where's this right here? Stabilize the roll line in the center front. Okay, so they say do the body of the interfacing, then the roll line. I don't see the, I don't like that. Like, okay, so. Apply interfacing to the wrong side of the following pieces. If you think thicker fabric, you can trim the seam allowances off, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Apply the chest shield to the top front. You'll have a double layer of interfacing in these sections. I love when they say things like that. That helps so much. Um, oh, there's the block fusing note. I kept looking for that thing. Okay, apply hem interfacings to the wrong side of the hem. So when do I do this? This says apply interfacing and then apply the roll line. Okay, so I guess you do this afterward. All right. Uh, the idea, hi, Sherbet, how's it going? The idea of interfacing, interfacing, <laughs> not high on my list. <laughs> All right, so the first one is the whole piece. Just trying to keep my uh, fabrics straight. This uh, piece of felt isn't quite big enough for my pieces, but that's okay. We can just do a little bit and then we'll shift it over. Good night, Malin. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a mod. Appreciate it. And thanks for turning us on to that app notion. That's pretty exciting. I don't know though, if you guys would have seen me kind of throwing a fit, I wasn't throwing a fit, but <laughs> My husband asked me if he could use my truck today and which means I have to drive his car and I don't like driving his car. <laughs> and um, I got in the car and I was like, oh, how do I roll down the window? How do I? Because he drives a Tesla. And so it's all on a um, it's like, like a computer screen. Granted, the car's amazing. Like, it, it's cool. He, he doesn't have, like, a super fancy one. Um, but uh, the electric thing is really awesome. You know, he loves it. But I wanted my phone to hook up to it so I could listen to my book on the way to work. And it just wouldn't. It, like, it kept going to his phone. I was just like, Rrr. you know. And then I was just like, you know what I don't like about this car is that I feel like we have to deal with computers tablets, phones, devices, all the time. Like you're always on something like that, trying to find a workaround, you know, for something or trying to get something to work. I don't want to do it in my car too, you know. <laughs> I was feeling kind of tantrumy, you know. He just walked away. He was like, yeah, I gotta get out of here. She always feels this way about this car. <laughs> Yeah, I hooked up my phone to it. It started playing my book. And then I went to, I had to pop the tr the front trunk, the frunk. <laughs> and then I went back. I had, paused, I had to pause my book. Then it didn't hook up with my phone again. I had to do it three times. I was like, okay, why? So that, the I'm saying all this because the idea of an app, like on one hand sounds really amazing. On the other hand, I'm like, oh. Do I really want one more thing to manage? 
All right, so here's this. This does feel really nice, this knit interfacing. It just makes it feel like fabric in there, you know? Okay, so now we have these. Let's find our hem facings. They might be these witty bitty ones. Do we have these for the front? Center back, outer sleeve, side back, side front, inner sleeve. Is there really no uh, center front? Did I miss that? Side front, side front, side front, side back, center back, outer sleeve. Okay, you don't have to do this on the center front. Perfect. We do have these. And we have our roll line, which for me is in this little bag right here. And it is this little piece they gave me. You love analog cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, I mean, there's just something about the fact that it just works. <laughs> I remember when our phones had buttons, exactly. Yeah, I think you're right, Barbara. Yeah. because this is the center front and you're right. I have this whole piece here that gets interfacing with the knit. Okay, yeah, thank you for the reminder. All right, so let's put this horsehair on here. Um, just so you guys know, it's not real horsehair. That is just what it's still called. It is, there, there's, there was no horses involved with the making of this interfacing, just so you know. Okay. This is optional. We did this pink edge here so that we don't get a rigid line th showing through the front. I know I should be lifting my iron and like lowering it, but I keep forgetting. <laughs> Remember when we didn't have a phone in our pocket? So one thing I've been doing at home lately is, um, especially like if I'm playing games or something, I don't look at my phone. Because I, I was getting into the habit where I would look at my phone in between a match or something. And, um, and everybody does that, but I don't want to do that, you know? I'm there to disconnect, not connect. So I have enough fabric if I'm not a big fan of this. Definitely gives it more body, but you can see, I can still see a little bit. You can see where it's, where it isn't. Your first apartment had a dial phone. When I was in high school, uh, my parents, when they let me have a phone in my room, it was the eighties, you guys, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, they only let me have a dial phone and it was so obnoxious. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna measure from your size dot to the other dot. I need one more pin. Yeah, I borrow a pin from you, please? There we go. Just like that. All right, so I've marked that line with my pins here. Sorry, I can't look at the overhead camera, but I'm just looking at online. And then you're going to cut this little piece of interfacing, which is about a half inch wide, and you don't want stretch. You want this to be very static, no stretch. Cut this about a half inch narrower or uh, shorter. Um, my scissors are on the floor. That's where I keep them, you know. I'll just cut this one now for the other side while I'm here. We're doing all the details. Uh, didn't think it should be a, well for um, long distance, oh yeah. <laughs> 
long distance. The day that we didn't have to pay for long distance calls was kind of a shock. I'm not gonna lie. And it's funny because the other funny thing is like, do you remember also when your cell phone had every call you made as a charge? Because I'm actually listening to a book right now that must have been <laughs> written then. And it, it's like probably just written within the last 10 years. But that was, uh, that's kind of dates it. Because she just figures out, oh, she figures out that her husband was actually talking to someone he said he wasn't talking to. Uh, by the uh, all the line items of their phone bill. <laughs> yeah, I think you can still look that up, but it's less like it, it's not something you really get charged for. You know, you just have like data. Oh yeah, exactly, Elizabeth. Yeah, I always think it's really funny when we get those weird phone books. Or I would get asked, they'd be like, you already have, you're already in our phone book, but you can enhance your uh, listing. What do I do with that piece of interfacing? No. You know, they wanted me to pay to be listed in there, and I was like, nobody looks at that. Oh, here it is. I threw it in the bin. Oh my gosh. This is just going to make our jacket more professional. These are the details Terry lives for. <laughs> right, Terry? <laughs> I just remember like when you use that dial phone, and it's really funny when I see videos of people going, they put it in front of someone and they don't know what to do with it, a younger person. <laughs> And uh, you, if you had to draw, dial a, like, like <laughs> oh, the other big thing back then was to call in to a radio station. They're like, be the 112th caller. And you're trying to use a dial phone. <laughs> you can't just press redial. Like when they came up with redial, <laughs> that just changed our lives. <laughs> just press the button and it redialed the last number. <laughs> All right, so here's that roll line right there. Yeah, I do know you. <laughs> Looks a little ruffly there. I'm gonna iron it from this side now. I have, I've made a few blazers in my life. I am not a pro at this, you guys. I am fairly familiar, but not, I'm not like a Taylor Taylor, so. Feel free to deviate from my steps here or offer me tips, advice, or no nos. I am open. I'm checking out like a few different how to's, reading my instructions and stuff. All that interfacing, and it's still look at how unravelly it's going to be. All right, so what's left before next week is I'm, you need to interface all of your pieces and get them ready. And then the, the first thing we're going to do is sew our front to our side front and do our welt pocket and uh, probably a little bit more. We'll see. I'm gonna see if I can do a welt pocket or do my pocket. Oh my gosh. Did I, oh, I didn't interface that. I thought it was too, stuck to it. I'm gonna see if I can still do the welt pocket on mine, but I have a feeling that it is too short. So we'll just do a practice. Let's get rid of all this fluff in here. Yeah, we talked a bit about that, Barbara. Were you here when we were talking about it? Because I think Terry and I have decided we are. I think there's only one on my jacket, but um, I was, I brought it up earlier because the one thing I've heard about bound buttonholes is that sometimes you're, it comes unbuttoned. I've, I don't have enough fabric or water in here. It stopped steaming. Um, and so I was like, gosh, do I really want uh, to do a bound buttonhole if the button's going to come undone, you know? 
But then um, I think Terry and I both came to the conclusion that we, we're gonna do it because we're here. <laughs> So I'm gonna do it. I've done them like once before a required thing, so it's been forever. But we'll practice, we're gonna practice for sure. I'm gonna get all my stuff. I'm gonna be ahead of you guys. I'm not trying to be. I think so, I think you do do it early on. I think you're right about that. Okay, so this one I have these pins. So I'm gonna mark them from the right side so that I can interface this. I don't even think we'll need those, but you never know. I can just mark them later after yeah, and I would also, after you do all of your interfacing, go through and make sure you got all your markings on there. Yours is step one as well? Okay, yeah. Yeah, my step one is uh, the welt pocket. But I have a feeling the bound buttonhole is pretty early on as well. Okay. I just want to sew. <laughs> you know, I have to say this side looks Like I was methodical, but that side looks like the side that I've been leaving face out. You know? That's what we were saying, Barbara. That is exactly what we were saying. And I also think like he's, you know, practicing and getting it right. Like I'm a little worried about doing it on this canvas. So I may get through a few practice ones and go, yeah, I don't feel comfortable. Oh, that's smart, Libby. Yeah, doing, because if you're doing the twill tape, it's a little bit more static. Oh, yeah, you guys are. Maybe I should have pulled my interfacing. Oh, this knit interfacing is kind of shrinking a little bit. Yeah, right, Libby? I know, I bet you are kind of nerdy for that. <laughs> for me, I'm the kind of a sewist that learns by sewing 15 of them, and then I'm like, this is what I think I'm going to do. I've looked at the tips. I like this tip. I don't like this tip. This is what I want to do different. I'm not going to sew 15 of these to get there though. All right. So this was the knit interfacing um, and these are the uh, yeah, basically the, lap the lapels. I turn to the right side. So, like this. So nerdy. <laughs> You'll be pad stitching for days. <laughs> oh, that's another thing you can do with your roll line is stitch through just to give yourself a guide. 
All right, I think we're, I think I got pretty much everything except for my pocket cut. So let's see what we have here. Let's kind of look through here. I like to set my bin up in the order of how I'm gonna sew things. Maybe that's, I always do this, but even, even just being live, it really helps me. It, it's just like anything you can do to cut down on your frustration. I'm all about that. Front facing, center front. So let's see here. So the first thing you need is your fronts and your side front. Oh, I need to still interface this piece, okay. Then after that, and your welts and pocket stuff, this will be our first bouts of sewing. Then we need, oh my God, there's pages for this welt. We're gonna do the back. I think this is the under sleeve. Yep, sleeve and sleeve. Side back and center back. I'm gonna do this. I flip it over and then I just start piling it up. Side back, center back. Collar. Oh, I need, still need the hem. I need to press all my hems too. <laughs> Uh, the interfacing hems. Sleeves. Then your front to your back and then your linings. comes later we get all of our lining pieces and the front facing then this piece then you probably get to your sleeves yep Oh, did I just put the sleeves in there? Wait. And then we're done. That was easy. <laughs> then you have all your finishing. All right, cool. Ouch. All right, so I just need to iron my side fronts and my hems. All these little doodads. That'll be great to get rid of all those little pieces and I need to figure out my pocket idea. Cool. And then if you're gonna use like a bias uh, or a binding that kind of trims that space between the, um, the like, like when your collar, your collar's turned back, that seam right there that goes down I'm explaining this so poorly. Let me just show you. I pulled it up on a screen, I'm pretty sure. Oh no, that's not it. I'm gonna do a, oh, that's not it. I think you know what I'm talking about though. Little piece of bias to make it look nice. Kind of a pop of color. Is this it? No, this is not it. Assemble the body, insert the sleeves. Assemble the front and the back lining. Oh, they do put the sleeves in there. I had the sleeves in the right spot. I think here we go. Oh yeah, here we go, this'll work. Here we go, so you see this red right here? 
You can do that there and then do that here on this, the front facing here. And then see how it looks, this little contrast. I think Terry and Libby would like those kinds of details. I, I'd like to do something like that myself. So they used a one inch wide fabric. So that meant that they had to offset it from the, um, the seam like pull it in away from the seam edge to line it up. So I would make yours wider if you're cutting it yourself. Yeah, between the facing and the lining, thank you. That's all I should have said. <laughs> yeah, so I'd like to do something like that. And so that's why I have these funny little fabrics pulled out here just to remind myself that I need to figure that out. This would have been great, but I don't have enough. Um, and I was gonna look in here. Oh yeah, I was kind of worried about that. I have all these pipings someone gave me. I don't think you'd want to do piping though, you know? Anyone want some piping? Let me know. It's old. I can't vouch for the integrity. I thought it'd be fun to do something kind of bold, but um, I I'm really kind of low on options, you know? I could take the piping out. It's a chain stitch. That'd be so easy. So this does give me some options. I would, I'd love it to be something like this though, like a, like a gingham. Oh, maybe I have, um, no. Hmm. Yeah, this is the wrong color. Oh, well. I'll figure it out. I have time. I have a couple weeks, you know, to figure that out. This is my reminder. I thought this would be kind of interesting. It's like a floral that doesn't really quite go. And I thought that actually might be kind of cool that it doesn't go, you know, so anyway, it is, and it's old. Look at that. It's so narrow. <laughs> Look how tiny it is. It's, it is one inch wide like theirs. So I could use it. Take out some of the fold. It's just not the right color. You know, I like it though. It actually goes with this really well because this is more of a blue. Oh, would that be so good? <laughs> that would be so good. Maybe I could use it. I mean, I don't mind that it doesn't quite match. Where's that pattern piece? Okay, maybe when we get closer, I can test some things out. But um, now that I've put all these in here. So this piece. Let's test it out. You guys are always honest with me. Oh, I pulled the wrong piece. What? Probably can't even see that. <laughs> it's so tiny, huh? I'm gonna pin a little bit and then I'll hold it up to the camera so you can kind of see. It's, it might be doable. Oh, it's so fiddly. What do you think? I 
mean, the answer is always gingham, am I right? <laughs> I just don't have one that works color-wise. I have this one. Nice, Julie, that's so great. Oh, I'm so glad, Julie, thanks for saying so. It's awesome. You think that's good, you guys? It's blue and not teal. I think I'll do it, it's so good. And then I'll undo it, uh, open it up, fold it down the middle and just re-iron it, you know? Oh, cool, Terry, that's awesome. Gosh, that was kind of a bummer that was just sitting there so close yet so far away. Yeah, right, Barbara, exactly. So there's this, this is so busy, Oof. but it could work. It, it kind of goes better because it's got a little more green in it, you know? That does match better, you guys. It's just, and I, I could put it on the bias so I can get that diagonal look. Maybe that's what I do. I don't know what this is, this stuff. You did the happy dance. Yeah, you think so, Elizabeth? I was thinking the same thing because I was thinking like the contrast and the, the pop. Well, I think I have a little time to think about that. I love the gingham though. We're definitely going a gingham route. We got to do that or I got to. I just made a big old mess here. All right, I'm gonna finish ironing my stuff so I'm ready. And um, I'm gonna think about my pocket too. If I put a pocket on the inside, I could do a welt pocket on the inside. Welt pockets on the inside, They're, they kind of like go across that seam right there. You know, they're kind of tricky placement wise because the bust is kind of in the way. <laughs> that says it all for my whole life. The bust is kind of in the way. <laughs> oh, that's a great idea, Libby, a vintage necktie. L Libby's getting so excited, I can tell. <laughs> I can feel it, I love it. <laughs> Yay! All right, well, next Saturday we'll start sewing. You have plenty of time to join in. You can pick a really simple coat, blazer. You can do whatever you want, you know? And then we'll just be doing this every Saturday. So um, for Wednesday and Thursday next week, I will be sewing the glissando pants. Um, they're right here. By Love Notions. I don't know what I was thinking when I decided to do a whole project in two days because this one is, it's, you know, there's a bit. This is by Love Notions. I'm gonna be doing the pants. Look how cute that skirt is though. Awesome, Lydia, I'm glad. My interior pocket at waist height. Oh, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, because then I could put stuff in there because I was thinking like if I had a chest pocket, whatever I put in there might show through. Man. Angela! Angela, you don't have to do that, thanks. That's nice of you. <laughs> Angela and Stitches. Thank you, appreciate it. 
Um, what was I gonna say about these? I'm doing this twill. It's like a natural color. Literally looks like muslin. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna do a contrast top stitch and it has a full button fly exposed. The back looks really simple, no yoke. Thank you. There you go, there's your little, your little cute cat. That looked too short, didn't it? That, that alert. So that's what I'm gonna do next week. Uh, I probably will cut and start on it uh, after I start cutting. So a little bit of the sewing, or maybe what I'll do is the buttonholes or something. Maybe I'll do the buttonholes off camera or something like that. So I can get the whole sew through on Thursday, by be done by the end of Thursday. It's not hard, it's just a long stream for me to do that. Oh, watermelon stitching on the pockets. I like that Libby. Do you think on the natural color that's the way to go? I was thinking about using a, a like a dark orange top stitch. Like I want brown. I'm hoping I have brown. If I don't, I'll just use two strands of thread. That works actually almost better. I'm kind of still addicted to quail, you know? Hmm, I gotta think about that. <laughs> if I do some fancy stitching, I'll do that before I start as well. Maybe on Wednesday afternoon. So, cause that takes a while, so. Oh, thanks Angela. <laughs> All right, you guys, I'm gonna head out, I'm hungry. It's already almost two o'clock my time. Thanks for coming. Cutting out is a big epic thing. So like this project, uh, I'm telling you, it's all in the prep. All this prep is gonna make everything a lot faster and easier. Really the only things we're gonna probably spend a lot of time on are the bound buttonholes and the welt pockets. The rest of it's gonna sew together really fast. I promise, it's really not gonna be the daunting project it is, there just seems. And because we've worked on the fit, um, because this pattern is well engineered, doing the whole lining to the body of the jacket, it's gonna be really easy. It's, it's very, very easy, I promise. And then um, same with the collar, collar is very easy. It's gonna be just fine. We're just gonna spend a little time on the pockets and bound buttonholes because it's something we're all probably a little bit like eek about, you know, so yeah. You can do a detailed, as detailed or as not as you want. So it's very loose. All right, all right, thanks guys. Have a great weekend. Good luck getting um, ready. Uh, feel free to surge ahead. There's no rules with this so long. It's just really a so long to get us all in the mood and feel pumped up to do it. <laughs> so, all right, I'll see you guys on Wednesday. I'm so glad Libby. I can tell you're all fired up, that's awesome. I am too. I just want to just go for it right now. It's so good that, and I'm really glad we're doing this every Saturday because I think I'm going to try and keep this, like I, we'll be done by the end of October, but at the same time, I'm pretty sure we'll be done by the end of October, but uh, I want it to be in these really manageable chunks. So if you're like, okay, I have to get caught up and I missed a Saturday and you have to do two Saturdays of, of work, it's not going to be that bad, you know? You don't have to do well pockets. You don't have to do a bound buttonhole. You don't even have to do a buttonhole, <laughs> right? So, all right, I'll see you guys um, on um, Wednesday for the glissando pants. We'll be cutting those out. Have a great weekend. Bye.